Hello, welcome to Come Learn with Paula. I'm so glad you'll be joining me today. We are going to finish up the chapter of 14th chapter of the book of Revelation, and we will also do chapter 15. So go ahead and grab your Bibles and open them up, and we will get started. If you don't have a Bible, then as always, just press the more button down below, and I will list the passage so you can follow along. And if you have missed some of the studies or you want to see the last one, then just go to my YouTube channel and go to the playlist, Book of Revelation, and just pick up where you left off. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. And I guess I just want to remind us what we were studying from last week, because this is kind of a continuation. And so last week, we saw that those who were pure and faithful will be redeemed from the earth and will receive their blessing while the Babylonian system will fall and beast worshipers will receive God's full wrath and fury. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so here again, we said last week that if you um, think you can take the mark of the beast and still be a Christian, the answer is no, you can't. So don't do that. Okay, um, well, let's go ahead and get started with this week's lesson. And we're going to start in verse 14 of chapter 14. So that's pretty easy. And like I said, you can look down below if you need it. Okay, it says, I looked and there before me was a white cloud and seated on the cloud was one like the son of man who with a crown of gold in his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Okay, so who do you think this is? Um, who's going to be coming back the same way he left, right? Isn't Jesus, remember, he was, when he ascended into heaven or was caught up, he went up in a cloud and he's going to come back in like manner. So we expect to see Jesus coming back on a cloud someday. And this is like the Son of Man. You know, he likes to refer, he likes to associate with us, which I am so glad. And of course, a crown of gold because he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But he has a sharp sickle in his hand. That means it's ready to be used. What do you use a sickle for? Well, that's, let's find out. Okay, verse 15. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Okay, so Jesus harvests the earth. It's like the, t the earth is ripe. You know, how many thousands of years has have they been waiting for this moment and you know jesus never does anything on his own there god has a, a wonderful a hierarchy and authority in heaven and so he always does what the father wants him to do and he is one with the father father the father god and the father the son and father the holy spirit so um i didn't say that right God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Okay, there we go. And so we know that they are in complete unity and everything is done according to a plan and according to uh, unity and decision. So finally, the angel comes out and he shouts in a loud voice to Jesus. He says, take your sickle and reap for the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung the sickle over the earth and the earth was harvested just like that, you know? Um, when Jesus comes, we're not going to have to go looking for him. You remember the verse that says, just as lightning flashes from the east to the west, that it'll be that fast. Everything will happen that fast. And if you, if they say he's out in the desert or in an inner room, don't go looking for him because he's not going to be there. He's going to be on a cloud. Okay. So this was amazing, but let's read to chapter, uh, verse 17 because there's another harvest here. And so, of course, the, we want to be in this first harvest, right? <laughs> but there is another harvest, so let's read it. Verse 17, another angel came out of the temple from heaven, and he, too, had a sharp sickle. Still, another angel, who had charge of the fire, came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle, Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the earth's vine, because its grapes are ripe. So the grapes, this is the grape harvest, which would be in the fall. And this is the grape harvest. Take your sharp sickle. Then verse 19, the angel swung his sickle over the earth, gathered the grapes and threw them into the great wine press of God's wrath. Oh, this is one you don't want to be in. 
They were trampled in the wine press outside the city and blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as the horse's bridle for a distance of 1,600 stadia. Ooh. Okay, so I think it's neat that the Bible talks about this in the Old Testament. So let's look at it because um, it'll give us just a little bit more information. So Joel 3, verse 13, it says, Swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come trample the grapes, for the wine press is full, and the vats overflow. So great is their wickedness. Okay, so great. They're ripe and full of wickedness. So this is the harvest of the the unbelievers, the people who worship the beast. This is this is at the end of time, right? So we're looking future here, and they're being harvested also. Okay, and let's look at Isaiah 63, and let's um, let's start with let's just start with verse one. Who is coming from Eden, from Mars? with his garments stained crimson. Who is this robed in splendor, striding forward in the great and in the greatness of his strength? It is I speaking in righteousness, mighty to save. Why are your garments red like those of one treading wine grapes, wine press? I have trodden the wine press alone from the nations no one was with me. I trampled them in my anger and trod them down in my wrath. Their blood spattered my garments and I stained all my clothing. For the day of vengeance was in my heart and the year of redemption has come. I looked, but there was no one to help. I was appalled that no one gave support. So my own arm worked salvation for me and my own wrath sustained me. I trampled the nations in my anger, and in my wrath I made them drunk and poured their blood on the ground. Wow, this section is titled God's Day of Vengeance and Redemption. So, you know, um, God is long-suffering and patient, and he does um, put up with us <laughs> for a very long time. But there needs to be a time when you bend a knee to God and say, you know, I'm on the wrong side. <laughs> I need to be um, with you and not against you. And so whenever it's time, Jesus will take care of people and he will in his anger. And, you know, he's the only one that can be angry and not sin. He's sinless, right? So he's the only one that can be because it's a righteous, righteous anger and it's against God and God's holiness. And that's just so um, it is quite a fearsome uh, scene of Jesus going and trampling in the wine press. Okay, um, in this section, we have that Jesus har Jesus harvests first and an angel harvests grapes and tramples with blood flowing. Oh my, how many harvests are there? So there's two, right? There's the righteous and the unrighteous. And then what do you think the first and the second harvest represent? Okay, well, I kind of answered that. I, I think the first one is, uh, you know, like, like the wheat and the tares. The wheat will be taken first, and then the tares will be dealt with and thrown into the fire, right? So um, it's here in the Bible uh, in chapter 14. So already we saw the 144,000 had been taken up, and they were on Mount Zion with the Lord. And now the Lord is ready to go and gather the rest of his kids, you know? So... Um, or his brothers and sisters, his mother, you know, how, however you, the family of God, right? So I think that this is um, amazing. And then let's see, what harvest is reaped in this, in this passage? So, you know, we saw the first fruits and then now this is the main harvest, I believe. And, um, you know, time-wise, we don't know how to, I don't know how to put it on a timeline. And I do believe that chapter 14 is a little bit of an overview of the um, of what's coming. We talked about that. And so this very well could be at the end of the tribulation, right? Before he sets up his rule and reign. But I don't know for sure. Okay, now let's continue on. And I think I have another question, um, but it's in chapter 15. So let's go ahead and start chapter 15. So that, that finishes up chapter 14, where we were seeing kind of a, um, you know, a, a chronolo chron 
chronology of things that are going to be happen, right? The 144,000 were taken to heaven. Then we had the three angels. One was telling the gospel to all of the nations and all the people. And one was saying Babylon has fallen. And the third one was saying, if you worship the beast, you're going to, it's going to be terrible. And then we see here Jesus coming back. And, um, you know, in chapter 20, we see him coming back on a white horse and he's king of kings and lord of lords. And that, that very well could be that. I, I'm not sure, but I think it probably is. And then um, now we're going to go to heaven because um, that was kind of a synopsis. And now we're going to look more specifically at what happens next and, and really the bowls of wrath of God. <laughs> so this is uh, getting ready. Next chapter is kind of hard, but here we go. Okay. I, not this chapter, but chapter 16, I think. Okay. I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign, seven angels with the seven last plagues. Last, because with them, God's wrath is completed. Okay, so we've already seen two signs in Revelation chapter 12. You know, we saw the woman, then we saw the dragon, and now we see another sign in heaven. And, you know, very well, I, I think that oftentimes things that are happening in heaven they manifest in the physical realm, you know, things that are in the spiritual realm manifest in the physical realm. So very easily we could see these seven, um, these seven angels as stars perhaps in the atmosphere. I, I mean, I don't know, but we, you know, it always tells us to look up because your redemption draws nigh, right? So, um, but anyway, it says that it's in heaven and said, it's a marvelous sign. Seven angels with seven last plagues. And isn't this nice? It says God's wrath will be complete with these seven last plagues. So there is an end to his wrath. Um, now, the people that will um, receive the wrath, I don't know that they ever get a reprieve, but it will be accomplished. It will be completed. And then verse two, and I saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire. Standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and the image and over the number of his name. Um, they held harps given to them by God and they sang the song of Moses and the servant of God and they sang of the lamb and the song of the lamb. Okay, so this is a beautiful scene. We're back in heaven. I love how it switches from earth to heaven. And so in heaven is a beautiful scene. And I want you to think about, um, we're gonna look at this a little closely. But I want you to remember that we have seen this sea of glass. This um, It says, and I saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire. Okay, so remember back with me when we were in Revelation chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. It says, from the throne came flashes of lightning, thunder, and peals of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. Those were given seven, those are the seven spirits of God. Also before the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass clear as crystal. So in front of the throne, there's a sea of glass. And so we're looking now again at the sea of glass. Well, the last time we looked at it, it was clear as crystal. We could see through it. But this time it says it is mixed with fire. Okay, so that means, um, I, you know, I kind of think maybe they can see through it. You know, heaven can see through it um to the earth and there's a lot of fire and destruction going on in the earth perhaps um but whatever it is now it is filled with fire and then beside the sea are those who have been victorious so the beast um you know remember you had to be victorious over the beast over his image and over the number of his name so those three things are important for us we, we can't fall in love with the beast and we can't worship the image and we can't take the number of his name, right? It's very important that we set ourselves apart from that and we're separated. And now these people are no longer in earth. They are in heaven. So I don't know if they were part of the, um, part of the, the reaping, you know, that was taken perhaps, um, perhaps maybe so. And now they're standing before the throne. They held harps and were given that were given to them by God and they sang the song of Moses and the servants. I mean, we saw that that's what the 144,000 were doing, right? And this time they're singing the song of Moses. And here's how it goes. It says, great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God almighty, just and true 
are your ways. King of the ages, who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you. All nations will come and worship before you. For your righteous acts have been revealed. Okay, so this is a beautiful picture of them in heaven. And so our next question was, um, who sings the hymn to God in verses 1 through 4? Okay, so it's those who were victorious. So you know what? If you uh, ended up having your head cut off or <laughs> ended up dying um, because of the bees, you are victorious. Isn't that interesting? Because we think that, you know, we need to live to, to, to win, right? But in this case, we just need to deny the beast. And regardless of how it goes from there, we're victorious, <laughs> so we win. Um, but it's all those who were victorious and had won because they had not worshipped the beast. Okay, the next question, what are the righteous acts that have been revealed? Okay, it says, the very last part, it says, all the nations came and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. You know, I had to think about this. I'm not real sure you can put it down in the comment section what you think, but I, I'm thinking that it is righteous to judge sin. It is righteous to bring justice to evil and ungodly men. Isn't that an interesting thought? I, to me, that it sounds it sounds wrong, but it's not wrong. It is correct it is the right thing to do to punish the ungodly and so god has done it okay um let's continue on with um verse 5 of chapter 15. after this i looked and in heaven the temple that is the tabernacle of the testimony was open remember you you couldn't open it um in the old testament that that caused that killed a lot of people <laughs> okay but it's open and out of the temple came the seven angels with the seven plagues okay so there's seven angels and they remember they were given the um they were given the last seven plagues they were dressed in clean shining linen and wore golden sashes around their chest then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels the seven golden bowls filled with the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. <laughs> okay, so how many times did we say, I say seven? <laughs> Uh, you know, when God repeats something, it's there's a reason. But there are seven. We're going to see them next week. And they are the wrath of God. And seven is the number of God. Seven is completeness. And with this, it will be complete. The What will be complete? The wrath of God against sinful man will be complete. Wow. And it's pretty bad. We're going to see it next week. Oh, my. Okay, let's look at a um, question here. And I have the hymn. Okay, we're going to go back to the hymn. The hymn beginning in 5.3 is called the Song of Moses, which was sung by Moses after crossing the Red Sea. When have you been delivered by God from danger, spiritual or physical? Oh, wow. Okay, so, you know, they in, in Moses' time, they had been delivered from the army that was behind them. You know, the army was... Uh, fast approaching and God parted the sea and they went through and then they're rejoicing. They're like, oh, yes, this is great. We didn't see any way out and God provided a way out. Um, you know, I, I'm i sure you all, I would love to hear what you have to say, how God has delivered you. I know one time <clears throat> I was getting to go in, getting ready to go in a store and I was sitting in my car and I, I didn't know for sure, but my doors were locked, but I was sitting in there. And someone came up beside my car and tried to open it. They, you know, pulled the handle real hard and it didn't open because it was locked. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And he looked in the window and, oh, he gave me the dirtiest look and I gave him the dirtiest look right back. But that scared the, that scared the daylights out of me. I was, you know, but God was merciful. And, you know, every day we ask for the Lord's protection. I, I encourage you, ask for the Lord's protection and to be at the right place at the right time. And to be kept from uh, the plans of the enemy. And, uh, you know, greater is he that's in us and he that's in the world. 
But at the same time, it says we have not because we ask not. So always ask the Lord to protect you. And he sends us ministering spirits. Angels are ministering spirits to help us. So, um, and the Holy Spirit speaks into your heart and lets you know, yes, you can go or no, don't go there today. <laughs> you know. So anyway, that was one time that I was just so thankful. But right here, the people in heaven, that is a whole different, that's on a whole nother level, right? I mean, they've just been delivered from the beast and, and all of the wrath of God. So they are very joyful. And then I wanted to look here at the temple in heaven. And we're always like the tabernacle of the testimony. Um, where is it? You know, where is it? And, um, I, you know, we saw in a different chapter that it was in heaven, that it was caught up into heaven and now it's open. So, um, and then there's all this smoke. Remember when Isaiah, Isaiah chapter six, what, and, uh, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. So you just, you couldn't, it, when the glory of the Lord rested on the temple in the old Testament, everybody just paused. It was the presence of God, you know, uh, um, a holy respect. I, th I think the fear of the Lord, we, we don't really show much of that these days, but it's important. It's important to fear the Lord, reverence the Lord, uh, just to give him to, to let him do his thing, right? He is God and we are not, right? So uh, the glory, it says, and the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power and no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Okay, so in this section I put, the, those victorious over the beast sing a new song by the fiery sea of glass. As the seven angels get received the seven last bowls of God to complete his wrath. Okay, so this is just, you know, he's watching. They're getting the bowls. The bowls are full. The indignation is full. Okay, what will fearing God more than fearing the beast produce in your future? Okay, well, we have to fear God more than we fear man. We have to fear God more than we fear not being able to eat or not being able to do what we think we need to do. So we have to trust in the Lord. He, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want, you know, turn to him and he will make your way straight. Okay. And then how do you feel about God bringing wrath on wicked men? You know, um, I have, I sometimes have a little hard time with that. I don't want anybody to suffer and hurt, but at the same time, that's wrong because, um, they hate God and they uh, have done evil and wicked things and they are our enemy. And so God will punish the right way at the right time, right? And then we're protected from them. So praise the Lord that he is God. He knows how to do it. He is just and we do not have to fear. Okay, well, in this section, uh, we learned that Jesus harvests the earth with his sickle and he brings judgment. He gives the bulls out, right? And then I put, we need to learn that choosing the path of an, over, of an overcomer is not easy, but the rewards in heaven will be great and we will be kept from the great fury and wrath of God. Okay, I'm going to read that one more time. We need to learn that choosing the path as an overcomer is not easy, but the rewards in heaven will be great and we will be kept from the great fury and wrath of God. Okay. Well, um, I, I, this right here says responding in prayer. Thank God for the assurance you have of your salvation. So if you are the Lord's, then um, giving thanks, giving praise, you know, God, you're mighty and powerful. You have a plan. It's working out. Um, thank you. Thank you that you are just and that you will take care of us. And I don't have to fear and I don't have to worry. Right. And if for some reason you're not his, then I encourage you. Um, think about it. What is it that's holding you back? Because it is hard to bend your knee to a holy and righteous God and to say, I need you. But it is also the most freeing, wonderful thing you can do in the whole world. <laughs> Humbling yourself before God who loves you is beautiful and he will not turn you down. You ask him, be my Lord, be my savior, forgive my sins, and he will. Okay. Well, thank you for studying with me. It's always great to see you. And I look forward to next week, although it's going to be a hard one, but uh, we'll do it. Okay. Love you. Bye.